Hey everyone, Jeff here. Uh, today I've got a vinyl update to do showing some stuff that I got a long time ago but never got around to listening to and then some stuff that I picked up more recently. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Uh, it's a pretty eclectic mix of stuff but um, yeah so first, first off I want to just show what we've got going on in the background and that's uh, the USA Live album by King Crimson and this is uh, a pretty great live album. Uh, one criticism that a lot of people have is that uh, Eddie Jobson's violin is not actually live. It was added in the studio afterwards. But, you know, I mean, authenticity aside, this is a really great live album and very happy to get a copy of that. So, um, the next thing I want to show here uh, are some records that Eric Dust sent me. And his channel, I believe it's EJD 1975 or some, something along those lines but um, anyway Eric has a great channel where he talks a lot about uh, prog and metal especially and he has really good taste and he sent me a few records so first of all thank you Eric and uh, those records are first one here is uh, Exile which is a band that I had never heard of but uh, this is on Wooden Nickel and these guys are kind of like, uh, I'm trying to think, early 70s, uh, kind of, not AOR, but, you know, relatively straightforward rock. Uh, not bad, nothing outstanding, but, you know, a decent listen, but nothing, you know, to blow your mind or anything. But definitely cool to get this. Uh, next one here is uh, Chronicles by Steve Winwood. Steve Winwood, of course, being of Traffic, Blind Faith, a number of things. And this is a compilation that focuses on uh, a lot of his hits in the 80s especially. And um, to be honest, it's better than I was expecting it to be. I um, I don't know, I I guess my, t my tastes are shifting a little bit. This is the sort of stuff that wouldn't have done anything for me in the past. But uh, yeah, I thought well-arranged, well-written pop music, so not bad. Very good to get this. <clears throat> Next one here, uh, the introduction by the Steve Morse band. Uh, Steve Morse is, of course, an incredible guitarist. And uh, Rod Morgenstein, or Stein, not sure, the drummer here uh, is really phenomenal as well. So yeah, lots of great musicianship on here. Uh, thank you, Eric, for sending me this. Uh, Eric also sent me a copy of Power Play by Billy Cobham and this is one of Billy Cobham's later albums and it's been a while since I uh, gave this a listen but if I remember correctly there are some really really great parts on here and then there some, are some other parts that are really marred by 80's production values but um, yeah on the whole this is great Billy Cobham's one of my favorite drummers so really really awesome to get this <clears throat> And then the last one here that Eric sent me is Talk Back by Passport. And this is kind of the same thing as uh, the Billy Cobham, where it's generally very good, but it does have a little bit of the, you know, cheesy 80s-ness about it. But it's definitely not bad, and uh, I'm really happy to get a copy of this. So thank you, Eric, for sending me those. Uh, I'll definitely get you back. I'll keep an eye out for some stuff that you might want. But, uh, so yeah, now diving into some of the stuff that I purchased, and a lot of this, um, like I mentioned, are things that I've had for a while just sitting around and I never got around to listening to because I was at school and didn't have access to a turntable. So anyway, first one that I want to show here is Magma Live. And uh, this came out in 1975, and this is a really, really great, double live album. Um, Magma is one of my favorite bands. They're just, something about their music is just so transcendent. And Christian Vander is, of course, one of the best drummers, uh, in my opinion, at least. So yeah, this is a really cool live album. Um, and it has one snippet um, of a piece that ultimately ended up in the Emmett Ray album from like 2009. So uh, it, yeah, it's definitely a cool little cool little album and, uh, and a lot of people actually think it's the best thing that Magma ever put out. So yeah, really, really happy to get that on vinyl. I've had it on CD for a while, but anyway. 
Next one here is a flea market find from ages ago that I just never got around to listening to, and that's uh, Moon Glow by Artie Shaw. And uh, this is big band stuff. I believe Buddy Rich uh, is on drums for a number of these tunes. But yeah, I mean, it's big band in the vein of something like Glenn Miller, maybe. And uh, definitely good. Not entirely my thing, but an enjoyable listen. And if you're into that sort of style, this is definitely worth checking out. Uh, next one here is Sunburst Finish by Bebop Deluxe. And uh, I'm pretty sure this is the first of this band that I've heard. But they, they've got a really interesting kind of uh, progressive rock, glam rock, art rock type sound going on. It's almost like somewhere between like Roxy Music, Styx, uh, David Bowie. It's, yeah, really good stuff. And the guitar playing here, uh, I believe his name is Bill Nelson, uh, is really, really great. So if you're if you're a fan of Roxy music, uh, sticks, that type of thing, this is definitely worth checking out. Very very good stuff. Uh, next one here is I think it's called Cry of Love. Yeah, the Cry of Love by Jimi Hendrix, and this was the first album released after he uh, unfortunately died. And uh, so this was a bunch of stuff that he had been working on at the time and it definitely shows a much more maybe funk oriented direction um, you know kind of straight ahead hard rock uh, than you know the more psychedelic sounding things that he was doing on like Electric Ladyland but um, yeah really really solid album it's not the, um, my favorite Hendrix but I think if you like the more funk inspired uh, part of his sound this might be your favorite so really good good album happy to get it uh, next one here is uh, Utopia I believe yeah called Oblivion so this is one of the later albums uh, of Todd Rundgren's Utopia and it's not it's not bad it's really not bad um, it's just it, the production really is it's just a sign of the times. It's definitely an 80s album. But musically, it's not too bad. So happy to get that. I really don't think I paid much for it. But that was one that's been sitting around for a while. I just never got around to listening to it until now. Uh, next one here is A Pair to Draw To by Herb Ellis and Ross Tompkins. And uh, this is kind of, you know, really, really mellow. It's just guitar and piano. Um, you know, it's kind it's kind of a little background musicy, in my opinion. But it's not it's not bad. Very good playing. Uh, you know, good arrangements, decent songs. You know, nothing nothing to blow you away, but definitely a nice listen. Uh, next one here is the Fugitive by Tony Banks, and Tony Banks is of course the keyboard player in Genesis. Um, I'm a big fan of A Curious Feeling. And uh, this is not that. <laughs> um, it's it's all right, but it's really you know unless you're some sort of uh, completionist and you gotta have everything Genesis related like I do, uh, it's really not that great in my opinion. But still, cool to get it. Uh, next one here is "Take It From Me" by the Terry Gibbs Quartet. And uh, so this has Kenny Burrell on guitar, and he, he does a lot of great solos. Terry Gibbs does some great solos too. But this is very subtle, very mellow, kind of loungy type jazz. You know, it's a sort it's a sort of thing that you wouldn't be too surprised to hear in an elevator. Um, you know, no offense to it, it's not bad. Uh, there's certainly some good tunes on here, and a lot of them are originals. But um, yeah, it's just I don't know. It didn't really grab me. And especially since it's on Impulse, um, I don't know, a lot of stuff on Impulse tends to grab my attention a lot more than this did. So it's all right. Uh, next one here is Flo and Eddie. And uh, these, two, these two guys were, um, I think they were in a group called the Turtles in the 60s. And then they, towards the end of the 60s, they joined the Mother's Invention. Uh, with Frank Zappa and uh, that lineup which produced I guess Chunga's Revenge 
and then live at Fillmore East albums. Maybe there's something else. I'm not. I can't remember. But in any case, they. Um, you know, it wasn't really the best lineup of Frank Zappa's group, in my opinion. They kind of led a little bit too heavily in the comedy direction. But in any case, this is actually a very good album. Uh, kind of pop rock sounding stuff, power pop maybe, um, but a lot better than I was expecting it to be. And uh, Ainsley Dunbar, who also played with Zappa, is on this too. So, yeah, not bad. A lot better than I was expecting it to be. Uh, next one here is The Turning Point by John Mayall. And this was him kind of ditching the blues rock, uh, electric blues thing, kind of doing a, a more acoustic uh, sounding set. And I think this is actually a live album. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm really not too big into, into straight ahead blues music. I haven't really found anything in that genre that does all that much for me. But uh, yeah, this is okay. It's not bad. If you're a fan of John Mayall, you'll probably like this a lot more than I did. But, uh, yeah, cool to get that. Uh, next one here is Class of 78 by Buddy Rich. And this was, uh, if I remember correctly, this was recorded in an interesting way. Like, it was actually recorded, like, live in studio. Like, each side was recorded start to finish. Um... But in any case, yeah, really, really solid album. You know, great sounding big band. Buddy Rich, of course, is a fantastic drummer. Uh, on here, a couple of the songs they do, Chick Corea's Fiesta and uh, Birdland, which was originally by Weather Report. Um, so yeah, decent, decent set. You know, nothing, nothing that'll shatter the mold or, or anything like that. You know, if you kind of think you know what you're going to hear here, you know what you're going to hear here. But uh, yeah, good album. Uh, next one here is uh, their Satanic Majesty's Request by the Rolling Stones, and I've heard some other Rolling Stones stuff, and I have I gotta say I haven't been blown away by the Rolling Stones, uh, at least what I've heard so far. Um, to me, I'm just I I can't help but compare them to the Beatles, and uh, I know I know which side I'm on. But anyway, yeah, this was kind of their answer. To Sergeant Peppers and that type of thing and it's nowhere even close to that level in my opinion and actually as far as I understand it the band themselves you know they're they've kind of distanced themselves from this record a little bit but it's all right it's just nothing fantastic in my opinion <clears throat> uh, next one here is Ghost in the Machine by the police and uh, pretty sure this is this is the one that came out after Zenyatta Mondada. And this one's a little bit more, you know, there's more synthesizers. It's a little bit more pop sounding. But a uh, really solid album. I, I love pretty much everything The Police did. Uh, I wish they would have made more albums, honestly. But uh, yeah, this is definitely a good one. Lots of good songs on here. And Stuart Copeland is one of my favorite drummers. So really, really good stuff. Uh, next one here is... Bark by Jefferson Airplane and uh, this isn't one that people talk about all too often uh, it's it's alright it's uh, you know it's definitely got some good moments but it's not outstanding or anything it's definitely not the best uh, Jefferson Airplane album or anywhere close to that but still cool to get a copy of this and I think I this was one I got a long time ago and I think I only paid a couple dollars for it so cool to get that now the next one here is Holland by the Beach Boys and uh, I actually want to talk about the Beach Boys for a little bit because I um, when I was really young I had a CD you know greatest hits compilation of theirs and I loved it at the time I was probably about eight years old or so eight or nine and then I just you know eventually I got into Genesis and yes and I just never listened to any Beach Boys again and then about three months ago I listened to Pet Sounds and my mind was blown and my entire perception of you know I, I realized that Brian Wilson is a genius and then I got into Smile and I've just been investigating the whole catalog and I'm not still not 
huge on the the older stuff anymore. But um, yeah, I mean, Pet Sounds has risen to be one of my favorite albums now. And uh, this this one in question here, this is all right. Brian Wilson's involvement on this is fairly limited. Um, on the songs, at least, there's a there's a poetry thing that I'm not too big on. It's kind of kind of nut sounding, to be honest. But in any case, um, yeah, I've just been absolutely blown away by uh, Smile and Pet Sounds in particular. And I'm actually going to go see Brian Wilson in September uh, at the Tower Theater, and he's doing Pet Sounds from start to finish, along with a bunch of other stuff. So I just can't wait for that. I think it's going to be absolutely mind-blowing. I've seen some clips on YouTube and the band that he's touring with, they're just phenomenal. So really, really can't wait to do that. But um, yeah, I just, I wonder why it took me so long to finally get around to listening to Pet Sounds, but it really is every bit as good as everyone says. And it's, you know, it's risen to be one of my favorite albums. Uh, so anyway, Holland by the Beach Boys is not that good, but you know, Pet Sounds, Smile, if you thought everything that they did was like surf and safari uh, you're very wrong <laughs> so anyway next one we got here is ivory moon by anthony phillips and this was in the private parts and pieces series uh, of albums i think this is the sixth one yeah and so these are a bunch of uh solo piano pieces and they're really really great um i didn't really know what to expect going into this because a lot of what i appreciate about other Anthony Phillips albums like you know Geese and the Ghost and that type of stuff is you know just the really lush arrangements and uh, his acoustic guitar playing especially and there's none of that on here but it's really you know it's held by the strength of the compositions and they're really really good songs and uh, yeah so if, you, if you're into solo piano music or Anthony Phillips at all that's definitely one to check out uh, the next one here is the one and only Blind Faith album. And this is another one I had forever, and I actually got it for free. Um, but I just never got around to listening to it for whatever reason. Um, yeah, but in any case, I've been listening to a lot of Ginger Baker stuff lately. The Ginger Baker's Air Force, Cream, all, all sorts of stuff. So I noticed that I had this sitting around in, in uh, you know, my one expedite cube with a bunch of stuff that I bought but didn't listen to yet and I was like oh I gotta listen to this and uh, yeah really good stuff you know every bit as good as everyone says and this is the alternate cover without the you know the picture of a naked like 13 year old which is cool I guess so yeah really good album <clears throat> uh, next one here is Wake of the Flood by Grateful Dead and uh, I actually haven't really listened to much Grateful Dead. Um, the one live album I listened to a little bit, you know, a few years ago. And uh, yeah, this is a really solid album. I think Stella Blue is the one that is the one track on here that I like the most. But yeah, I'll definitely have to dig into Grateful Dead a little bit more. But this was a solid album. Flip the record. Uh, next one here is Mind Exploding by Lucifer's Friend, and this is another one that I've had for a while, and these guys kind of do like a hard rock, progressive rock, uh, you know, type thing, and uh, yeah, really good. From what I had heard beforehand, this is, you know, towards the bottom end of their discography, and this is the only thing of theirs that I've heard so far. Excuse me. But yeah, I thought this was really, really solid from start to finish so if this is one of their weaker albums uh, I can't wait to hear the rest of them so yeah really good stuff uh, next one here is sticks 2 and uh, sticks for whatever reason they get they get made fun of a lot I don't I don't think they're all that bad um, and actually I think this album's really good um, yeah I don't know they, they do have a little bit they have a little bit more pomp than I would like, I guess. You know, something, their music is really overblown for sure, but I don't think that's necessarily a key for, uh, you know, an indicator that's bad. 
Um, yeah, I think this is a really solid album, and uh, definitely enjoy listening to it. So, cool stuff. Uh, next one here is Spectres by Blue Oyster Cult. Uh, this is the one with Godzilla on it. Uh, yeah, pretty good. I haven't found anything from Blue Oyster Cult that has blown me away yet, but everything I've heard I've liked, and uh, this is no exception. So, cool to get that. Uh, next one here is Arrows by Steve Kahn, and to be honest, I remember very little about this, but there's uh, a number of good musicians on here. The Brecker Brothers are on here, uh, Steve Gadd plays some drums, uh, David Sanborn, who I'm not a huge fan of, but definitely a talented musician. So yeah, lot, lots of good playing on here, and you know, decent, decent music, but it's definitely a little bit more in the kind of smooth... MOR direction than I would really care for, but decent stuff. If you see it cheap, maybe pick it up. Uh, next one here is No Madness by Straubs. And this is um, this is one of their albums, I guess, th this came out in like 76, I want to say. I'm not sure. Somewhere around there, but this, this is kind of after their heyday a little bit, and I I had heard some pretty bad things about this, but I only paid like a dollar for it, so it didn't really set me back. And it actually was a lot better than I was expecting it to be. Um, it's not on par with some of the stuff from the earlier uh, 70s, which I think is really fantastic, progressive folk stuff. Uh, but this is definitely not bad. If you're a fan of this band and you've been avoiding this one, uh, I don't think it's as bad as a lot of people say. So, yeah, really cool to get that. Uh, next one here, uh, Behavior by Saga, and uh, I had listened to some of their other stuff a while ago. I think I have Heads or Tails on vinyl, and uh, maybe a couple others. But in any case, I, um, you know, I liked what I heard, but didn't make a huge impression. Uh, for whatever reason, I listened to this one, which is supposedly one of their weaker albums, and I thought it was great. I listened to this a uh, few times in a row, actually. Um, yeah, really solid kind of neo prog AOR type uh, type stuff, and you know it's it's poppy, but it's really well written and it, you know dated production. But I just I thought this was an awesome album, so I'm gonna have to revisit some of their earlier stuff. But yeah, uh, this this usually doesn't even go for much money either. So if you see a copy of this, I definitely recommend it. And the last thing I want to show here is uh, Soft Machine 6. And uh, this is a really cool double LP. It's got one live disc and one studio disc. And by this point, Soft Machine was uh, very jazz oriented. I guess this one is a little bit more fusion than 5 was. But in any case, uh, yeah, if you're, if you're a fan of kind of you know, experimental, really, you know, somewhat freeform fusion. Uh, definitely check this out. It's really good stuff. So, Soft Machine 6. And that concludes today's update. So, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And uh, thanks again to Eric for sending me those records. And, uh, yeah, so leave a comment down below. Let me know what you uh, think of some of these albums. And until next time.